think all in all, this, this year's jury is of as high or even more high quality than we had last year. And uh, I think the conversations that ensued based on the discussion of this work showed that. Potomac Valley Brick is pleased, A, to have this, this jury here. Um, you know, you all have a lot of experience and I'm really privileged uh, to have you all here. Um, we're also very excited by the, by the entries. Vivian Loftness, Professor of Architecture at Carnegie Mellon University. Uh, we had the luxury of uh, four judges, and uh, one was a distant judge, but was able to evaluate all the entries online. And um, as is typical in a, in a jury like this, uh, with a good number of submissions, is that you, your first pass is to look at the strength of the overall submission and start to select the ones that are really strong, both in terms of their aesthetic quality as well as their technical um, clarity. And, and as we start to narrow down, we spend a lot more time reading and looking at every diagram and trying to be really sure that we understand the solution. So uh, this is my second year on the jury of the Brickstainable competition, and I think that it does a number of things that are really invaluable. Uh, number one is it makes a broader number of students and professionals really focus in on a material and how many ways you could really understand and use a material to solve environmental uh, challenges. Uh, and I think that's an invaluable uh, effort, both for the professionals and the students that enter this competition. So it's really fun to look at these projects, and I think that, uh, that uh, those who are looking at them online uh, will really enjoy seeing how people solved, uh, in this case, specific uh, climatic issues from this region. Uh, and I think, um, and then in the technical um, product development from several climate regions. Number one, brick is a material that has a thermal capacitance. It can store heat and it can store cooth. And then finally, I think what we began to see is the exploration of brick as a, um, not just a visual surface um, for, for walls and, and um, uh, interior floors, but also as a structural uh, component, and, um, and one that is highly crafted that makes for you know, really beautiful exposed structural elements. Uh, my name is Anna Dyson, and I'm director of CASE, the Center for Architecture, Science, and Ecology. I think these kinds of competitions are really, really important for refreshing the discourse around um, common manufacturing processes and what was really nice about a competition like this is that you had a lot of entries from uh, professional offices, you had a lot of entries from student groups. Um, there was a real cross-pollination of ideas across the spectrum, and that's a really important thing. I think it's just incredibly refreshing for professionals also to be competing um, uh, and in discussion with um, what's happening in the academy and what's happening in universities and vice versa. I think what's important about this competition as opposed to let's say some other competitions is it focuses in on one material that we know, we think we know so well, but that we really need to question. You know, we really need to um, think about these materials that people associate with historical or traditional buildings, but in fact they carry so many properties that might actually uh, really refresh our repertoire for contemporary buildings and make contemporary buildings in fact a lot more sustainable. Plus, people just love bricks, you know, so it's a, it's, I think it's important for architects to remember, you know, that bricks are very popular um, and that brick buildings are cherished. Hi, I'm Bill Browning. I am a partner in Terrapin Bright Green, a research and consulting firm based in Washington, D.C. and New York City. As we move to try to do net zero energy buildings, um, we really have to rethink the physics of the building. And one of the key components of that is looking at the thermal performance of the building. And for so many years, we've looked at buildings that are trying to make them lighter and lighter and lighter and, and less and less mass. And so you really lose the ability to have a time lag in the performance of the building. What I love about this competition is that it gives people the ability to step back and think about a traditional material in new ways. And you can see that both in the technical entries and in the building entries, that there's some really creative thinking about performance of brick and people saying, oh, well, it has hydroscopic capabilities and how does that affect the humidity balance in the, in the building? Um, that sort of level of thinking moves you beyond just thinking about 
materials as a structural piece or as a decorative piece, but also how they affect um, your, how you feel, the comfort and the performance inside the building. It's fun to watch a design competition, particularly as one that continues to see the richness of solutions increase over time and the diversity of entries increase over time. Uh, this was a really fun competition and uh, well run, and I'm hoping that uh, the number of entries continues to expand uh, and the interest. Uh, it was fantastic to hear that people from 62 countries were interested in it this year. You know, maybe 100 countries next year.